In this recording, I'm going to be talking about how to solve absolute value equations and, uh, yeah, absolute value equations. So let me just put up this heading. So solving absolute value equations. So recall that an absolute value simply makes everything inside the absolute value a positive. So for example, if I have the absolute value of negative three, that just becomes a positive three. And of course, the absolute value of a positive three will stay positive three. So here, if we want to solve an absolute value equation, let's take, for example, the absolute value of 2x minus 6 is equal to 14. And I want to solve for x. So recalling this up here, if whatever's inside can be positive or negative to get the same answer, I can split this up into two separate problems. I can say either 2x minus 6 equals 14, or I can say negative 2x minus 6 equals 14. Because if I put absolute value bars around this, this negative will go away, just like it did with the negative 3. So now I can simply solve as I would without the absolute values, and I can add 6 to both sides over here and get 2x is equal to 20. And then I would divide both sides by 2 and have x is equal to 10. And over here, I can distribute this negative to get negative 2x plus 6 is equal to 14. Subtract 6 from both sides to get negative 2x is equal to 8. And then dividing by negative 2 on both sides, I have x is equal to negative 4. So I have two answers here, x is equal to 10 or x is equal to negative 4. And I always check my work. So if x was 10, 10 times 2 is 20, minus 6 is 14, and the absolute value of 14 is a 14. If x was negative 4, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, minus 6 is negative 14, but then when I take the absolute value of a negative 14, that becomes a positive 14. So both of these answers do work. So you see here, whereas without the absolute value bars, we'd only have one solution for x, the absolute value bars here create two solutions. Now doing another one, let's take this time a quadratic I want to know where is the absolute value of x squared minus 4 equal to 12 so here again I consider the case when x squared minus 4 equals 12 or when a negative x squared minus 4 is equal to 12 over here, I can add 4 to both sides, which gives me x squared is equal to 16. And then I can take the square root of both sides, and I'll get x is equal to a positive or a negative 4. Because the square root of 16 is either a positive 4 or a negative 4. Over here on the right, I can distribute this negative to get a negative x squared plus 4 is equal to 12 and then subtract 4 from both sides to get negative x squared is equal to 8 and then dividing by negative 1 on both sides I'll have x squared is equal to negative 8 
But here, no matter what x is, when you square a positive number, it stays positive, and when you square a negative number, it becomes positive. So another way of thinking about that is if I were to take the square root on both sides, I'd have the square root of a negative number, but again, no number times itself will be a negative number unless we're allowed to use complex numbers, which are imaginary numbers. So this one over here has no real solution or solutions. So my only two possible solutions here will be a positive 4 and a negative 4. So I'll check both of those. If I have positive 4, 4 squared is 16, minus 4 is 12, and an absolute value of a positive 12 stays positive 12. So 4 works. And now I will check x equals negative 4. A negative 4 squared becomes a positive 16. And a positive 16 minus 4 is a positive 12. And then, of course, the absolute value of a positive 12 stays positive 12. So here we have the two answers, x equals positive or negative 4. And now I'll just do one more before giving you a practice problem. Let's say I have the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is equal to 1 fourth x plus 5. So again, I'll set up two situations. Either I'll have the positive stuff equaling to 1 fourth x plus 5, or I'll have the negative inside stuff equaling 1 fourth x plus 5. And now I'll solve as usual. I will go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides here, which leaves me with 2x equals 1 fourth x plus 2. At this point here, you can subtract 1 fourth x, or you can multiply everything by 4 to cancel out the fraction. 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times 1 fourth x just becomes a 1x and 4 times 2 becomes an 8. And now I've canceled out my fraction, so I'll go ahead and subtract x on both sides to get 7x equal to 8. And then dividing by 7 on both sides, I will have x is equal to 8 sevenths. Over here on the right, I will distribute this negative. and then I will add 3 to both sides. And again, I'll go ahead and cancel out my fraction by multiplying everything by the denominator, which is 4, and I'll get negative 8x is equal to 1x plus 32. Subtracting x now gives a negative 9x equal to 32 and dividing by 9, a uh, negative 9, excuse me, will give x equal to negative 32 over 9. And now I'll go ahead and check both of my answers. If x were 8 sevenths, I'd have 2 times 8 sevenths plus 3, which I'll convert into sevenths, since I have a sevenths denominator here. So 3 is just like 21 sevenths. And then I need to take the absolute value, and I'm hoping that's equal to 1 fourth times 8 sevenths, plus 5, which is the same as 35 sevenths. Over here, 2 times 8 is 16 sevenths, plus 21 sevenths. The 8 and the 4 will cancel with each other and we'll be left with 2 sevenths plus 35 sevenths. 16 plus 21 is 37 and common denominator of 7. And 2 sevenths plus 35 sevenths is 37 sevenths. And then the absolute value of 37 sevenths just stays 37 sevenths. And I have validation. So x equals 8 sevenths is one of the answers. Next I'll check negative 32 ninths. 
So I'll have absolute value of 2 times negative 32 ninths plus 3, which is the same as 27 ninths, equal to 1 fourth times negative 32 ninths plus 5, which is the same as 45 ninths. Here I have negative 32 times 2, which is negative 64 ninths plus 27 ninths all in absolute value. And here the 4 and the negative 32 will cancel with each other and we'll be left with minus 8. So I'll have minus 8 ninths plus 45 ninths. Minus 64 plus 27 is a minus 37 ninths. And we have absolute value bars. And 45 minus 8 is 37. And then here, absolute value of a negative becomes positive. And again, we have both sides equal to each other. So x equals 8 sevenths and x equals negative 32 over 9 are the two solutions for this absolute value equation. So now I'm going to give you a couple practice problems. And your directions will be to solve for x. For the first one, we will have the absolute value of 1 fifth x plus 1 is equal to 6. And for the second one, let's do 2 times the absolute value of 3x minus 3 is equal to 4x minus 10. So at this point, pause the recording and work out your solutions. And then when you are ready to compare with mine, play back. And I'll go ahead and work out my answers now. So hopefully you've had time to get yours. For number one, I either have the situation where 1 fifth x plus 1 is equal to 6, or where negative 1 fifth x plus 1 is equal to 6. So here, I will subtract 1 from both sides and get 1 fifth x is equal to 5. And then to cancel out this 1 fifth, I can multiply both sides by 5, and I'll get x is equal to 25. Over here, I will distribute the negative to get negative 1 fifth x minus 1 equal to 6. I'll then add 1 on both sides to get 1 fifth x is equal to 7. And then I'll multiply both sides by a negative 5 to get x equal to negative 35. And now I'll check both of my answers. If x is 25, 25 times 1 fifth is 5, and 5 plus 1 is 6, and the absolute value of 6 stays 6. So x equals 25 works. And I'll try x equals negative 35. Negative 35 times 1 fifth is negative 7. A negative 7 plus 1 is a negative 6. And then when I take the absolute value of a negative 6, it becomes a positive 6. So x equals negative 35 has worked as well. And those are my two solutions. Now, for number 2, I either have, um, I can either uh, work with the 2 and distribute with the 2 for both situations, or you can start off by dividing both sides by 2, which will give me the absolute value of 3x minus 3 is equal to 2x minus 5. And now here, I'll set up my two situations. Either 3x minus 3 is equal to 2x minus 5, or a negative 3x minus 3 is equal to 2x minus 5. So over here, I will add 5 to both sides and get 3x plus 2 is equal to 2x. And then I will subtract 3x from both sides and get 2 is equal to negative x, which means that x is equal to negative 2. And I won't box that as an answer yet, but I'll kind of put a squiggly cloud around it so it's easy to find later. And over here, I'll distribute this negative to get negative 3x plus 3 is equal to 2x minus 5. 
I will add 3x to both sides to get 5x minus 5 equals 3, and then add 5 to both sides to get 8 equals 5x, and then divide both sides by 5 to get x equals 8 fifths. So these are the two solutions that I'm getting from my algebra, and now I want to check my work, or check the answers. So if I plug in x equals 2, or negative 2 rather, so let me do a check down here. If x is negative 2, I'd have 2 times absolute value of 3 times negative 2 minus 3. And I want that to equal to 4 times negative 2 minus 10. Simplifying here, I'd have 2 times the absolute value of negative 6 minus 3 equals negative 8 minus 10. Minus 6 minus 3 is a minus 9. And minus 8 minus 10 is minus 18. The absolute value of a negative 9 becomes a positive 9. And 9 times 2 is 18. But wait a second, 18 does not equal negative 18. So this solution does not work. So although the algebra gave me x equals negative 2, when you check that, it does not work out. So now I have to check when x equals 8 fifths. And I'll do that over here. When it's 8 fifths, I'll have 2 times the absolute value of 3 times 8 fifths minus 3. And I want that to equal to 4 times 8 fifths minus 10. 3 times 8 fifths is 24 fifths. And 3 is the same as me writing 15 fifths. So I have a common denominator to subtract the fractions. And now 4 times 8 fifths is 32 fifths. And 10 is the same as 50 fifths. So I'll go ahead and write it as with a common denominator. And now 24 minus 15 is a 9, so I'll have 9 fifths. And 32 minus 50 is 18. But I have a negative 18, because I have 32 minus 50. Here, the absolute value of 9 fifths stays 9 fifths and 9 fifths times 2 is 18 fifths. But again, I'm running into a case where I have a positive answer equal to a negative answer. So I have this solution also does not work. Since these were the only two answers we got from our algebra, and then when we check them, both of them don't work, we have here that for the original absolute value equation, there are no real solutions. And I want to show why that's the case. So I'm going to use Sketchpad to indicate why. So I need to graph 2 times the absolute value of 3x minus 3. And I need to graph 4x minus 10. So here, and forgive my dog starting to bark, here we see, here is our first function, 2 times the absolute value of 3x minus 3. And here is our second, 4x minus 10. And if I shrink this down, we can see a little better what's happening. Now notice that over here, these two lines will get increasingly large, and their slopes are such that they will never intersect. But if we didn't have these absolute values, this piece here of the absolute value function, right over here, would have been dropped down into the side of the x-axis where it's negative y. 
and this piece would have intersected with this bottom piece of the 4x minus 10 line. But because we took the absolute value, where the two functions would have intersected, the absolute value reflects up that piece of the 2 times the quantity of 3x minus 3 and creates a situation where the functions will never cross each other. And because they never cross each other, that means they will never be equal to each other. And because they're never equal to each other, that's why we run into the situation where we get no real solutions or where both of our answers do not work. And that solves it.